In this lesson, we'll be applying filters non-destructively using smart filters. I've got a file open right now that you should have downloaded and opened up in Photoshop yourself. The thing with using filters is if I just went up to my filters menu and applied a filter, let's say noise or add noise or one of these other filters, it would actually make changes to my pixels and I want to work with a non-destructive workflow. So the first thing I need to do is actually change my layer that I'm going to work on into a smart object. Once I convert my layer to a smart object, then I can apply smart filters. So let's start by turning our background into a smart object. I can do that one of a couple of ways. I can go up to layer, smart object, convert to smart object, or I can right click on the, the background layer itself or on a Mac control click and choose convert to smart object. And now it's a smart object so it will retain all its original pixel information no matter what I do to this. All right. Now when I go back to my filter menu, they all look the same still, everything is still there. But if I apply one of these filters now, it will be applied as a smart filter, which is again a non-destructive workflow. I think the first thing I'll do is I'll go to my filter gallery. And that pops up a separate window here. And I think I'll adjust my view down here to fit in view so I can see the whole image. So I can go down to this pull down menu here and just choose fit in view. And you can see on the right hand side here, sort of in the middle column, I have all these folders which contain many different filter styles that I can apply. So if I choose colored pencils, for example, I see a representation of that filter being applied and it's being updated in the preview window. See here, I've got all kinds to choose from. If I go to distort, I can choose diffuse glow. And you'll notice in the right hand column, depending on the filter that you use, you can control some of the parameters for that filter. So I can, for example, change the graininess on this. And I do have the opportunity to zoom in and zoom out. Depending on what filter I'm using, I may want to zoom in or zoom out. Again, grain, texturizer, makes it look like possibly canvas, burlap, brick, or sandstone. And you'll notice down here in this window that I have a current list of the filters that I've, apl I've applied. I can actually compound these filters. I can add more than one filter. So let's say I have the texturizer here set to canvas. And I'll just scale it up to 200%. And I want to add another filter. I actually have to click on this new effects layer. And it doubles it up to start with, but I can go and change this with the highlighted one, which is dark. Let's see, I'll just randomly pick one here. I'll say graphic pen. Now, depending on the stacking order, will affect these, and there's going to be a lot of different interactions depending on the filters. But this restack this, I grab it, and I just change the stacking order. Now, I can also turn on the visibility of the various filters by clicking on the eyeball, and it just hides that effect. I can also delete it by highlighting it and just clicking on the little garbage can icon here. And now I'm just left with texturizer. Let me actually pick a couple here and we'll create a smart filter. Uh, I'm just going to go up to, uh, let's say, stylized. No. I think I'll go up to the artistic section and choose plastic wrap, which kind of has an interesting feel to it. I can also grab and move around, as you can see here, with the little hand tool. And if I want to see this at full view, fit in view. And there we have the whole image. So let's just apply this plastic wrap filter and click OK. I'll leave it at its default settings and I'll click OK. Now if you look down in, into my layers here, I'll just pull this up a bit. I've got my smart layer and my smart filter. So my smart object and my smart filter. Now let's explore the smart filter a little bit here. This big white area actually represents an alpha channel or a mask. So if I click on it, I could go in 
and actually delete some of the effect. Not to be confused with a mask directly associated with the image, but just associated with the effect. So the best way to do this, I think, is just to create a gradient. So I can go G on my keyboard or hit the gradient tool here. And with that mask layer selected, I'll just do a gradient from black to white, and I'll go from the bottom corner to the upper corner, and I'll make it a fairly short ramp. And you can see here, all this black area is hiding the effect itself. And as it turns gray and lighter gray, it slowly allows part of that effect to be applied until it's in the pure 100% area when it hits the white inside of that mask. And boom, left to right, right to left, short ramp, long ramp. And you can see how it gradually applies the filter. It's really nice, very powerful feature in fact. Now if I wanted to edit the filter, I can go down and actually dip, double click on the filter name itself. In this case it's the filter gallery. If I double click it, it calls up the window and I can make any change I want. I can add to the effects. I can replace the effect with something different. Maybe, you know, with uh, underpainting. Let's change the lighting on that top left. And the scaling, 200%. Just letting my preview catch up here. And again, if I want to see that at actual size, fit in view, and click OK to accept, accept that. And there is the new filter, but it still is being uh, masked by this alpha channel attached to the filter itself. Now, I can create a layer mask on the layer itself, and I'll show you how to do that. Well, you know how to do that, but if I create that and actually put a gradient through that in a different direction, it has a whole different set of effects. It's actually masking the full image in combination with any filters that are applied to it. Let me just delete that mask, highlight it, hit the delete, and we're back to the full view of the layer with a gradient, gradient masking some of the effects. Let me actually go back and double click on Filter Gallery and re-choose the plastic wrap. Click OK. You just can see that it's a little more prominent. Now there's this one other little icon down here. It's called Edit Filter Blending Options. It gives you a slightly more set of subtle controls. I double click that. I actually can control the blend mode and ironically the opacity can be controlled here as well. So I can do an overall opacity effect which means if I set it to 50% the filter will only have a 50% effect. But it's still going to be masked accordingly from this mask. If I hit my tab key and enter that you can see here when I click it and let go, I see what that 50% will do. I can bring that up to 100 again, but you can't see the preview on the artwork as well as in the preview window. And the preview window as well allows me to zoom out and zoom in. Now when it comes to blending modes, that's a whole nother area of experimentation. grab this again. My scroll wheel's a little messed up here. All right. So let's say I say multiply. Well, it's only multiplying on a white background right now. But screen. So if I had other images under it, this would be even more dramatic. But you can kind of get the idea here, the different blend modes. And again, even the filter affects the blend mode. I mean the filter, yes, the uh, mask affects the blend mode as well. So if I go back to normal, click OK, you can see how I can get some subtle control on this editing filter. I can actually change the filter here. I can apply a mask to the filter. And this is a smart filter applied to a smart object. And I would like you to create this one and take that same image and duplicate that layer five times and experiment with five different filters and five different masks on the filters.